Hey guys, this is Kevin from Jensen USA. I'm currently in Scotts Valley, California at the headquarters of Fox Factory Racing. This is where they do a lot of the development, testing and research behind their suspension forks. We are here to see the new 2025 range of mountain bike suspension. Um, the new range has three new dampers that are completely redesigned from the ground up. So we're gonna go inside, talk to the experts, get our hands on some of these new forks and go test ride them. So the first thing you're probably gonna notice is the lowers on this fork. Um, Fox went full bling and put gold Kashima color lowers on this. And there's a story behind that. So Fox started in 1974, which makes 2024 their 50th year anniversary. And that's been a history of a lot of research, development, progression in suspension design, which has led to a lot of winning and a lot of gold medals. So to celebrate their 50th anniversary, they decided to release a limited number of all their forks in this Kashima gold colorway. Um, there's actually gonna be 1,974 gold forks of each model to celebrate their um, first year as a company. And uh, it's a beautiful fork. And if gold's not your thing, don't worry. The fork will also come in the standard black and the factory orange as well. The gold fork looks amazing. Yeah. Um, it matches our gold TRP brakes. Uh, yeah. Um, look things are looking good. good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's very interesting. Some bikes don't cl it clashes a bit with, but other ones are I like, mean, that looks really good. What about the orange? I mean, yeah, uh, the orange the gold is also. definitely works. A lot. Uh -huh. The orange <laughs> also has some clashing for sure. I get in so much shit about that orange fork. Yeah. Uh, that's great. So, Fox's newest, you could say, flagship damper is the Grip X2. Um, not the Grip 3, as many of you were probably expecting, but the Grip X2. And basically, Fox wanted to, you know, take the Grip 2, one of the best dampers in the world, and make it better. So this isn't just a small iteration on the Grip 2, it's a whole new damper um, with a, a real focus on tunability and basically maintaining a steady feel while still maintaining a tactile feel as well. So you feel that proper connection with the ground and really just being able to track as, as amazingly, um, to say it simply. So my name is Ariel Lindsley. Um, I do product development and testing specialist is my title here at Fox. Grip 2 was a great damper, as Sergio spoke about. It's always been really good. Won a lot of races on it. Um, people love that damper, right? It had some amazing features, high speed rebound, which nobody else had done before. Um, we still believe it's really important to like, if you're really trying to get a tune on a fork, you need to be able to adjust that. Um, but after six years of living with that, you know, in my world or more, yeah. <laughs> there's things you want to change, you know? Yeah. So going back to the drawing board on that one, it was like, it was pretty cool because we really just knew what we wanted to do. Yeah. We want more room for valving. We want a bigger base valve. Mm -hmm. um, we want to like, you know, not have any cross tack on the rebound adjuster to the compression. Um, so right off the bat, that was almost easier to set targets for because like I said, we'd all lived and tuned on that damper so yeah. much. Uh -huh. um, we just knew what we wanted to do with it. And um, yeah. designing it wasn't easy, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we but knew we wanted the goal, we knew we wanted to accomplish with that. Yeah. So that's kind of the gist. That, yeah. So one of the newest features of the Grip X2 damper is it has a new base valve configuration. Um, so basically the IFP or the internal floating piston um, has a larger diameter. And what this allows them to do is from the previous Grip X2, um, which had seven shims in it, the, the new Grip X2 has 23 shims, so way more. And what that basically means is that basically shims are also referred to as valves. And basically this is what's allowing the oil to flow through both the rebound and compression circuits. And by creating a much higher shim stack, it basically allows the fork to have a much larger range. They kind of morph the damping curve is the term they use, where the entire range of compression adjustment is now fully useful. It's not necessarily the amount of range that each damper makes. Yeah. It's okay. making that range work. Okay. And that's always been a struggle with any mm -hmm bike company yeah. making suspension is that while there is a big range, uh -huh. it's not necessarily functional. Okay. Yeah. So we spent a ton of time making sure that these things work from all the way open to all the way closed. Mm -hmm. And we didn't 
cut down on the range of the damping. So you can basically run this fork fully open compression or you can run it fully closed on the compression and it's not sacrificing that tactile small bump feel that you're looking for. So it really allows this fork to be used by way more riders um, because it has such a perfect or not per such a big range of adjustment now that actually works no matter where you have it in that adjustment range. Well, so like they said when they started talking about Grip X2, we wanted to put more valves in there, right? Yeah. Um, it allows us a lot more flexibility and tuning to get the perfect pressure balance, but figure out exactly what damping we want and not have any limitations in tuning, mm -hmm. right? Um, but when you have a smaller piston and the IFP has to travel a lot farther yeah. to, take, to take up the displacement, of the shaft moving into the tube, of the, the outer tube of the damper. Mm -hmm. um, but by making that upper section of the of the damper a bigger diameter, mm -hmm. you're getting more volume is in circumference than just up and down. So now yeah. we, we've saved packaging room there. The IFP doesn't have to go up and down as far mm -hmm. um, to take up the displacement. The other big reason for that, maybe more of the main reason, is we wanted to use more valves on the base valve and actually at the mid valve too mm -hmm. and on rebounds. So we needed more height room. And yeah. so going to larger diameter, the IFP it doesn't float as far. We steal back that room to add valving um, and features into the damper. So, um, but then also we got a bigger base valve, which now you start with a larger outside diameter valve. Mm -hmm. And as you step in, you can have more increments yeah. to the middle of the valve stack, of valve height, or uh, valve diameters. So, and that just gives you a lot more granularity of like where you're making, yeah. where you're making, where you're uh, creating force or dissipating force through. So, um, right. yeah, bigger, bigger <laughs> piston, more valves gives you more tuning opportunity to, okay. yeah, awesome. is the best way to do that too. A, a great quote they mentioned in the presentation to us was that, you know, that music, the true music, is what lies within the notes. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it, actually. I hadn't heard that one yet. Have you not heard that one yet? Yeah. And they kind of took that same philosophy when designing this damper where, yes, obviously when you're riding, the big impacts are what you're really noticing and is what it's obviously apparent that your fork is, you know, working through. But it's really those in-between moments that Fox really focused on and offering incredible traction and just hugging the ground performance on all that stuff in between the big impacts. It's hard to explain exactly how that yeah. feels when you ride it. I think you'll figure it out some yeah. today. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you'll figure it out more as you go from one place to another. Okay. Especially uh -huh. riding things that you're not familiar, familiar with. with. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a very different feel yeah. in the way the damping is built. Okay. Because it does actually build more damping than in the past, uh -huh. but it doesn't feel like it. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, but that is the case in that all these things are just opening and closing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But uh -huh. it's the way and how they're opened, at what direction they're opened, mm -hmm. and all the, the assisting parameters that are, they've really changed the way this fork works. Okay. What they told us is that the average compression and rebound stroke is 30 milliseconds. So that's, you know, on a ride, that's you're, there's so much fork movement and they really want to dig in. And the way they accomplished creating a great feeling fork in those in-betweens is just creating an incredibly fast change between compression and rebound circuits. And that's one thing you notice when riding the fork is just that it's just an instantaneous change in direction that's just completely seamless um, that provides a truly unbelievable feel. Cool, so uh, yeah, we're here with Greg Minar, uh, someone that really needs no introduction, probably the greatest mountain biker downhill racer of all time, <laughs> as you've probably heard a lot. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're super excited to talk to you today. Um, so we'll kind of just dive right in. Um, so like, how long have you had the new damper and how long have you been riding on it? Well, I've had the new fork for about three hours now. Three hours. <laughs> um, and uh, I would imagine I, I'm not entirely sure how they've, how this uh, cartridge come about, but I'd imagine it's what we've been racing and download over the last couple of years. You know, uh -huh. um, every call it six months, there's a new dab and it comes out. So we're always progressing, and, mm -hmm. and you know they've made some massive improvements in the compression um, dampening. So yeah. I'd imagine this is what we, we've headed to and, and uh -huh. how they come with this new cartridge. Very cool, yeah. It sounds like a lot of 
Vic strives with, you know, basically feeling to use, you know, regardless if you have your compression fully closed, fully open, the fork's gonna not sacrifice sensitivity and anything like that right. um, with this new fork. And again, they're claiming it to be the greatest fork that's out there now, um, which I think it's probably true. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I, I have no doubt. I mean, it, yeah. these guys are, are developing stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and as a racer, sometimes it, it gets a little irritating. You know, you just get comfortable <laughs> with mics and they something. go, hey, this is better. And you know, test it through and get all your settings dialed in. Yeah. Um, but definitely from what you just said now, it, it's exactly what we've been racing in the last season. Mm -hmm. And um, it gives the bike so much more control under braking. You know, when you, you, you're braking heavily on the front, but you still need to grip and turn, mm -hmm. um, the Stambler really allows that. That To me, that was one of the things that stood out most on the, on the Stambler. Very cool, yeah. Do you have any questions for Greg, Preston? Um, so in between leaving the previous team and going to mm. the current team, were you able to test other companies or other things? And I don't know. I, um, oh, bike companies or suspension? Suspension. Or, oh yeah, so uh, when I moved across, I, I had a chat with the CEO and he said to me, well, I said to him like, hey, I need to know what suspension we got, especially suspension because mm -hmm. you know, I feel like most bikes, you could probably get away with manipulating the bike through suspension. Mm -hmm. um, so what suspension are we running? And yeah. so he goes, well, you choose. I want the fastest bike and I want to have the best team in the world. You make the, you, you pick what you need to make this bike the fastest. So, you know, obviously I come from a Fox background. Yeah. They've had a long history with, with RockShock. Mm -hmm. And so we went out testing and, and that was the first thing we had to do because without knowing what suspension we're gonna be on, we mm -hmm. don't know what brakes or drive chain or anything else. So, you know, if we went with RockShock, so we had to go with SRAM. Yeah. You know, you can't, there's no way to really separate the two. So, um, we went out testing Suspension-wise, I felt like I could both work really well. And uh, what stood out to me was the handling on the Fox. And um, it was made really simply to me by the head engineer. He goes, we can make, we have time to make any suspension work. We can use shims, we can do this, we can do that. He said, but we don't have time to build a, a new chassis. So we're going with Fox. <laughs> so um, that's how we end up with Fox. And, um, you know, we, we just, just, gelled well with it so yeah so to kind of final wrap up this fork um from just first glance it looks a lot similar to the current 38 um you know the architecture of the lowers is the same same with the uppers the kashima coat is the same um, and also the air spring is the same as the previous model um, what's different about the fork are two big things and one smaller thing um, mainly the damper obviously a whole new damper redesign and also there are new bushings on this fork um, we talked to remy govin or remy go govan <laughs> um, while we were at Fox, and he told us that Fox actually sent him a new fork with the new bushings in it, while he still had the Grip 2 damper. Um, and he said immediately he noticed a big difference just from the bushings, so the improved bushings make a big difference. More damping without the added harshness is, is one of the key points, and then also the friction that they've been able to reduce with the new uh, bushings in the, in, yes. in the lowers, or I thought was probably even more noticeable. Oh, um, uh -huh. I got a set of lowers before I got the new damper, mm -hmm. and even just the bushings made like a very oh, big wow. difference in, in the performance, so okay. yeah. Very cool. Quite yeah. cool. Um, and then the other change they have for this fork is the steer tube's actually a little different. Um, the first iteration of the 38 had that tapered in, inner part of the steer tube, um, where they actually went back to having a, a, a full just circle cylinder, I guess you could say, uh, steer tube design. It's actually the same steer tube that they were using on their E MPB rated forks. So still super strong design. It does have a little shelf halfway up it for increased strength, which does make it difficult, if not impossible, to run certain tools like the one up tool. The reason why I know that is because when I tried to put on my one-up tool, That's exactly what happened it didn't to fit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually didn't realize that that was the reason until I got here for this event yeah. and someone well, told there, me there's that. There's also a weird like shelf in it where like you almost wouldn't, I don't know if you can hit a star nut out of it. Right, there's like okay. a weird raised edge so um, yeah i think that's what the one-up tool hits so oh yeah. okay yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah <laughs> yeah that's it that's hilarious and yeah yeah one thing i noticed when we were installing um 
we both got new 38s mm -hmm. um, that they yeah, had the steer tube no longer has the like the ovalized interior in it um, it may have even been the the actual like thickness of the steer tube might be thicker and it also kind of has a it seems like a shelf in it almost. Can yeah. you kind of explain what that is and what happened to the overall? We version? just, we continually try mm -hmm. to improve not only stiffness, but longevity of the product and functionality over a <laughs> long term, which yeah. would be creaking crowns or creaking uh -huh. fork legs. Yeah. And we took a step with the oval steer tube. We changed some things with that. Mm -hmm. This is just an iteration of that it externally it looks exactly the same internally uh -huh. the budding's different yeah uh -huh. and rigidity and stiffness should be different as well okay and it allows for more tools and stuff to fit in there maybe <laughs> <laughs> honestly uh, that is not that's something not reason, we really it, design around but yeah but it, whatever. it does yeah. some people like it uh-huh <laughs> so they you know they're designing for optimal performance of their fork um and they felt that this this steer tube design was the best way to achieve that um, but yeah, like the f current fork, still has the air bleeders on the back here, still has the rebound, two rebound, low and high speed rebound adjust down here with the protective cap, which is super nice. Um, and same token system as before. So again, everything that was great about the first fork is still here and then just improved upon the damper to make it an even better fork. So I already spent quite a lot of time on the new fork uh, in Santa Cruz at the launch event that Fox had us out to. Um, so I decided to invite my friend Nate out here. Uh, Nate raced professionally for five years on the downhill circuit. Uh, he rode for Fox Factory for those five years. So what better way to test out a new fork than give it to someone really fast. Uh, Nate also spent his previous couple years on a Grip 2 fork. So he has a really good comparison. So. First off, yeah, how did you kind of, what was your first impressions of the new fork? I uh, found that it was uh, really responsive. Um, it changed direction really fast okay. uh, mm -hmm. from compression to rebound. Um, it was really supple uh, and just predictable, I'd mm -hmm. say. Did the, um, one of the new features of it are the improved bushings. Um, do you feel like that played a big role in both just the suppleness, but also that, again, that quick uh, change in rebound and compression. Yeah, you don't feel like it's uh, it's fighting you. Um, uh -huh. Like every time it changes direction, it's really, really smooth. Yeah. yeah. Does it feel like it's tracking the ground better than the previous oh, fork? Oh yeah, definitely. By a lot, okay, yeah. very cool. Um, yeah, you also went from a 36 previously, and this is a 38. Any initial impressions on just going up the larger chassis and how that felt on the trail? Yeah, it's uh, it's stiff, but it's not too stiff. Yeah, um, uh -huh. it it allows you to maintain your direction. Yeah. without getting uh, deflected mm -hmm. off of sharp sharp uh, hits. Yeah, very cool. Um, <clears throat> also, a big kind of talking point of Fox with this new fork was that. They basically create a whole, you know, the compression uh, range is basically usable from fully open to fully closed. I know you were running it pretty much mid ground on both high and low speed compression, um, and you felt that wasn't affecting any of the suppleness that the fork was providing. No, no, and I just kind of followed along with the chart that uh, they put on the fork lowers, uh -huh, um, yeah. and they they've put a lot of time into that. So yeah, I think uh, yeah, they, starting there is important. Very cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, thanks for giving us some opinion on it. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> so Fox released two more dampers this year as well. Um, first, there's the Grip X2, but they also released the Grip X and the Grip SL. So I'm gonna dive into the Grip X first, which is basically their direct replacement for the Fit4 damper. Um, so this is gonna be their new trail bike damper. Um, it's a design that they basically expressed as getting four-way performance out of a three-way design. So basically a four-way is referring to compression, high, high and low speed compression, high and low speed rebound. The Grip X is gonna have high and low speed compression and then just one rebound adjustment. So basically the high speed rebound is fixed and the low speed adjustment is still there on the bottom of the fork. Um, basically this new fork drops some weight from the X2 um, and provides a damper that has a very proper uh, kind of firm mode that you can adjust. Grip X, um, there were a lot of people that wanted a different feature set mm -hmm. than what, than the four-way adjustable Grip 
the grip two at the time damper was mm -hmm. and so we wanted to make something that still had a firm mode you could use that it's like your all mountain trail you know mid travel bike and maybe you do ride long sections of pavement to get to the trail or you're going to grind out miles of fire road and do a 60 mile mountain bike ride on a you know whatever travel bike you know yeah. um, that feature set speaks to that kind of riding um, and with now grit you know fit for not having to go in xc4 because it having its own damper we could really go and design that damper to be exactly what we wanted for that mm -hmm. um for that feature set there's a lot of riders that want a gravity damper in their 36 38 maybe a 34 um mm -hmm. but you know it's a little bit heavier and um it also you know maybe doesn't have the feature set that every rider that's going to ride at one of those forks cares about the most um and so Grip X is kind of our trail version of that where people want to be able to do a firm mode like I was talking about. Like they need some, a little extra. Mm -hmm. It's also really quickly easy to adjust. Like you want to firm up the fork a little bit for a jump line like yeah. thing Jackson was riding in the video. Like yeah. you can crank it over to like close to closed yeah. and you got a little bit of a platform for like pushing through lips and stuff. Mm -hmm. But you can quickly like boop, back to like ultra plush trail mode. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, so easy to adjust, but also very, um, very effective in a compression adjustment. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, has a firm mode. So like you need to throw your firm switch on and go pedal across town to get to your trails. Yeah. You know, you got a little bit of platform to pedal on or a long grindy ass road to get to the top of a thing or like a Downeyville race. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a good example uh -huh. of like Sean's so excited to have that. Da I used down to do Downeyville too. I'm I've not doing down. that kind of riding anymore. Yeah. I don't like to suffer, I, but he's rode, still into it. And I rode there last summer. It was, yeah. it was great. But yeah. for him racing, like putting yeah. that on a, ray, a full 34 or making yeah. a 36 as light, so light as possible. And then yeah. there's the weight savings, right? Uh -huh. We did a little bit smaller rebound piston and rebound shaft. So the ratios are very similar, okay. but we were able to shrink it all down a little bit and you know, use a little bit less oil, but we kept the base valve big. So you have that awesome, you yeah. can really fine tune the compression to get it to feel super good. Like a grip yeah. X, I mean a grip X two, excuse me. Um, <laughs> but, um, we shaved like 70 grams out of diaper. So you take that in a 36 compared yeah. to a grip X two, yeah. you're getting a lighter fork, yeah, you know what I mean? And you're starting to shave weight on a trail bike, but you're kind of still able to stay up a chassis size where you got like a ripping fork still yeah. for, for pushing it hard on the downhill. Yeah. So we're looking at the top of the Grip X2 damper here, but I want to use this to kind of explain how the Grip X damper adjustments look at the top. So this outer high speed compression adjustment knob actually has a little lever on it on the Grip X damper. And basically the cool design is that the first about 90 degrees of rotation of the high speed compression damper um, actually pushes down on the valve stack of the high speed compression. Um, and then once you continue past that first 90 degrees um, and eventually get to the final click, it actually, that final click actually closes the high speed circuit completely. Um, so that it basically provides you with an incredible, you know, platform for, for climbing. Um, and it still has a blowout valve. So if something happens and you, get a big impact it'll blow through that um, but basically just gives a great uh, climbing p position for the fork when you need it to perform in that way um, also compared to the previous damper the fork is 70 grams lighter um, if it has the grip x compared to the grip x2 so there's also a little bit of weight savings in there for the weight weenies out there so the final damper is the new grip sl which this is going to be their xc damper, um, which is going to be available in both the 34 platform and the 32 platform, both standard and step cast. We had, like I said, we had Fit4 before, uh, and that kind of also did trail forks, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And also was our lightweight XC damper, because it was a little bit lighter than Grip2. Um, but we saw a need to take like XC damper and make it as light as possible, right? We wanted to make the, one of the lightest forks, if not the lightest fork on the market. And to do that, we knew we had to make a little bit lighter damper. That one was not solely designed just to be lightweight and only go to 130 mil travel. So that was, that's Grip SL, 100% um, XC focused. You know, we knew we could do something lighter there, right? Mm -hmm. Like XC doesn't need quite the adjustability of like high and low speed all over the place. It just, you really have a simple feature set and it needs yeah. to get the job done, right? Uh -huh. And so, and also saying this damper is only going to 130 millimeters. It's not going to fit in any bigger forks. We're not going to take it up and like fit four all the way to like 180 millimeters of travel. Yeah. You could really do, it really freed up a lot of space to design mm -hmm. specifically to 130 millimeters and just that helps save weight. You know yeah. what I mean? If you're in a, if you're Brian trying to design that thing, mm -hmm. 
that gives you a lot of freedom to start yeah. shaving weight out of it, so. Looking at the new 32, it's a completely new fork. Um, everything, and this is a 32 step cast, everything is completely redesigned from the previous version. Um, it now has this crazy looking uh, rearward arch um, instead of a front arch on the fork. Um, basically this was done so that the amount of material needed for the arch to cover the tire is actually less than if you have the arch in the front. So that's why they did this design to save weight. Um, the fork also has a completely new design on the from the standpoint of the actual stanchions of the fork aren't in line with the steer tube. They're actually offset slightly. Um, again, this would basically allow them to achieve the, the offset they're looking for while using less material. So, Basically, this is the lightest cross-country fork ever made. It well, comes in at uh, 1,285 grams, which is 100 grams lighter than the previous fork, um, while also being 40% stiffer. So this fork is way stiffer than the previous model and lighter. Um, so where did they lose all this weight? Um, 75 grams comes from the damper. Um, Another nine grams comes from the newly double, double butted upper tube. Uh, another nine grams comes from a new optimized crown. Uh, another 11 grams comes from an ultra light steer tube and the redesigned arch. So again, you may be wondering why I'm reading off my notes because there's just a lot of information about this fork. Um, so basically, you know, with this new design, the fork is much more simple. It has a simple three position lock um, for open trail closed. Um, it also has very clear indentations for those so that racers can easily just reach down and click those without being confused as to where their fork is landing in the compression. Um, also works very well with the new rebound or with uh, remote adjusters as well um, for those people running remote lockouts on their bikes. Um, so yeah, as uh, with this new damper, it's basically lighter and performs better than um, the previous damper that was in the fork. So that's gonna kind of wrap up the recap on the new dampers that Fox is releasing in their 2025 line of forks. Um, what's also really cool, you know, obviously not everyone can afford a new fork, but they might want to upgrade it. So all three of these new dampers are backwards compatible. So you can fit them in your pre-existing Fox fork. Um, you still won't quite have the same feeling as these new forks, mainly because of the, the improved bushings on this new model. Um, but there is ways to continue upgrading your fork without having to uh, ball out for the new one. So uh, that's really cool. We're excited that we always love when companies have that in mind and think about the customer in that way as well. So we're really excited about these forks. We've ridden them a fair amount already and blown away by their performance. Everything they claim they do, we pretty much feel that they accomplished. And these forks track amazing. They feel incredibly buttery. It's really an amazing fork. And they claim it's the best fork we're ever gonna, that you'll ever feel. And uh, they may be right. Thanks for watching this video on all the new 2025 Fox suspension forks. If you like this content and want to see more of the newest, greatest gear and bikes coming out in the bike industry, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And always remember to keep pedaling.